With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what's your story for today? We call this one Cowtown Troubleshooter. But the day California and I rode in the Mesa Junction, we weren't thinking about trouble. We'd had a long three days in the saddle, and all we were interested in was a chance to wash the trail dust off and get into some fresh clothes. I tell you, Hoppy, it just don't seem possible a town could have grown so much in the years since we was here last. Ah, it beats anything I ever saw, California. I guess it just proves what a railroad line will do for a town. Yeah, uh, why, I bet you there's twice as many stores and offices along Main Street here as there was a year ago. Sure. Uh, and looky, the hotel's been painted. Outside looks good. <laughs> yeah, so I see. But I'm just hoping they got a room with a couple of good beds on the inside. Yeah, yeah. You know, every time I leave the Bar 20 bunkhouse, I wish there was some way to pack my own mattress along. <laughs> uh, speaking of the Bar 20, uh, you reckon we'll find out if Buck can get a good enough price for his stock to make it worthwhile driving it this far? Uh, maybe. With two companies here in the cattle buying business and with the railroad connections they got now, Mesa Junction seems like the place to drive them. Well, it shouldn't take long to find out, I guess. Yeah. Uh, First, we'll tie up and see about that room. Uh, suits me. Hmm, <clears throat> uh, oh, wonder what's going on in front of the saloon down the street there. Ah, uh, hard to tell. Probably just an argument of some kind. Come on. Oh, boy, boy, boy. Sure feels good to stretch your legs again, don't you? Sure does. Well, howdy, Catch. Just get in town. That's right. You got a room for us? Sure thing, cowboy. Got a nice room at the back where it's good and quiet. Let's see now, um, number 12, it is. Ah, it'll be fine. You can sign for both if you want to. All right. There you are. Uh-huh. Cassidy and Carlson from the Bar 20 Ranch. I'm Cassidy. Hoppy, most folks call me, and this is California Carlson. Can you see that our horses are taken care of? Sure can. Well, here's your key. Room 12, straight down the hall there. Hey, Rose! Fine. Rose! Rose! Any idea where the sheriff is? Well, no. What's the matter? There's trouble brewing out in front of the saloon. Pete Foley's trying to pick a fight with Wayne Carter. Oh, Pete's always trying to do that. I know it, but this time Foley means business. He's liable to kill that Carter fella. Oh, that was a shot. Come on, let's see what's going on out there. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Cowtown Troubleshooters. Hoppy in California had just entered the Mesa Junction Hotel and registered for a room when a man came rushing in saying that someone named Pete Foley was about to kill Wayne Carter. As the man spoke, a shot was heard, and Hoppy and the others raced to the saloon to find out what happened. Can't see much for the people gathered round. Now, let's shove through here. Come on, one side here. That. Get out of the way and let us pass, Pete Foley. Wayne's done nothing to you. Shut up, you. Might have known Carter to hide behind your petticoats. I got a good mind. You to... can't scare us, even if you do have a gun and Wayne doesn't. Let us go, Foley. I don't want any trouble with you. <laughs> Listen to the dude. Should let you have it between the eyes instead of just shooting your hat off. I'm surprised you didn't, you snaking coyote. Why, you... I don't need no gun to take care of you. Wayne, be careful. See how you like this. Hey, that Carter fella knows how to use his fists. Yeah, he's doing all right. Hit him, Wayne. Hit him. Well, I'll be... It. Carter knocked him flat. Hoppy, look. I'll settle this my own way, Carter. Hold it, fella. I wouldn't draw that gun if I were you. Huh? Mind your business, cowboy. I'm making this my business. Now get up and hit the road. You can't tell me what... Move! Well, all right. I'll go for now. But don't think this is the end of things, Carter. Oh, Wayne, are you all right? Sure. I'm all right, Judy. Come on. But 
Aren't you going to thank the gentleman here? Foley might have shot you if he hadn't stepped in. Uh, thanks, cowboy. No thanks necessary. I'd just like to see a man get a fair deal. That's something Pete Foley doesn't believe in, Mr... Uh... Cassidy. Oh, thank you, Mr. Cassidy. We both appreciate your help. Uh, come along, Judy. Your father's waiting for us at his office. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Cassidy. Goodbye. Hmm. For a man who's almost been shot, Carter don't seem very grateful, does he? Uh, maybe he doesn't realize how close he came. If I were Carter, I'd steer clear of Foley from now on or else start packing a six-gun. <laughs> Carter pack a six-gun? Oh, he's not the type for gunplay, I'm afraid. Well, I better get back to the hotel before somebody walks off with it. <laughs> That's a good idea. We'll go, too. <laughs> hey, that did my heart good, seeing that Pete Foley put in his place there, huh, <laughs> I'm afraid it's like Pete told Carter. This won't be the end of it. What seems to be their trouble? Fighting over the girl? Oh, no, no. Judy Barton's going to marry Carter. No, the trouble's all because of business. Uh, business? Yeah. You see, a few months ago, Judy's dad and Carter come here from the east, start up a cattle company. Now they're threatening to get too big to suit Jess Granger and his company. Ah, two cattle companies having a feud, huh? Yeah, that's it. Granger was here first. Had things pretty much his own way until Barton and Carter come along. Well, naturally, Jess doesn't like the competition. Can't blame him for that, I guess. Well, no. Except when he hires a gunman like Pete Foley to try to scare the competition off. I'm afraid the trouble's going to wind up in the shooting feud before long. Well, can't the sheriff keep him under control? It doesn't seem like he can. He's out of town half the time, anyway. I see. Well, here we are. After you, gents. Well, I didn't realize it was getting so late. Oh, that clock's about 20 minutes fast. It's only about 2.30. What difference does it make, Hoppy? We ain't going to try and do any business today, are we? Sure we are. You seem to forget what Buck told us about getting back to the bar 20 as soon as we could. Hey, let's see. Uh, I gave the key, didn't I? Yeah, I got it. Thanks. We'll see you later. Ranger Cattle Company. Just the place on down the street is Barton and Carter outfit, Hoppy, huh? Which one we're going to do first? I uh, might as well stop here at Granger's. We'll find out what kind of a price he'll offer us and then check with Barton and Carter. I wonder if that uh, Foley feller is going to be inside. <laughs> we'll soon find out. Told you that's not the way to handle a fellow like Carter. Shut up, Granger. Look. Uh, well, well, uh, come in, gentlemen. I hope we're not interrupting anything too important. Are you Jess Granger? That's right. Here's the guy I was telling you about, boy. Oh, I see. Cassidy's my name, and this and is... And maybe I ought to take care of this hombre right now. That'll do, Foley. You can leave now. Oh, but you... I said that'll do. I'll talk to you later. All right. Now, now, gents, what can I do for you? We're from the Bar 20, Granger. We're going to have about 400 head of cattle ready for market next month. The boss sent us to Mesa Junction to find out what kind of a price we I can do, Cassidy. I think you'll agree that's a fair price. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. You want to just sign this agreement? The whole thing will be arranged. I'm afraid we can't sign anything until we've checked in with the other cattle company, Granger. Well, now, there's no need going to see that two-bit outfit. They can't better that price. Just the same, we'll have to see what they offer. <laughs> All right. The chances are I'll take them over before you drive the cattle in anyway. Supposing they don't agree to be too cold. Oh, they'll come around. I've made them a fair offer. And if old man Barton wasn't such a stupid fool, he'd see it's smarter to sell to me than be ruined eventually anyway. Well, I'm not much of a businessman, but it looks to me like this town is big enough for two cattle companies. It won't be big enough for several years yet, Cassidy. And since I was here first, Barton and Carter had better sell out to me, or else. Ah, well, that's all between you and them, Granger. I'll let you know what we decide to do after we talk to them. Sir, Judy told me when she and Wayne got back to the office what had happened, Cassidy. And I want to add my thanks to theirs. That's all right, Mr. Barton. If I were Carter here, I think I'd start carrying some protection. No. I refuse to carry a gun and ask for more trouble than we already have. I agree with Wayne. It would only make matters worse, Mr. Cassidy. You see, Cassidy, where we come from, people don't often settle their differences with bullets. As far as I'm concerned, I'd be all for getting out of this part of the country before someone's killed. Now, now, let's don't have any more talk like that, Wayne. It's all right, Dad. Wayne's upset over what happened. 
And Pete Foley gave him a terrible kick in the leg, which doesn't make him feel any better. As a matter of fact, I think I'll go home and rest, Fred. I don't feel my best. Sure, you go along. Oh, uh, I'll look in on things tonight for you, too. Better stay off that leg for a day or so. All right. Nice to see you again, Cassidy. Carlson? Yeah, yeah. So long. Take it easy, Carter. I'll see you tomorrow, Judy. All right, Wayne. Now, gentlemen, shall we talk business? That suits us fine. Excuse me, Mr. Cassidy. Dad, I'd better run along myself. I promised you some fried chicken for supper, remember? <laughs> How could I forget? Uh, I wonder if Cassidy and Carlson here wouldn't like some good food for a change. Why not ask them? How about it, men? We could go into things more thoroughly after supper. Why don't you join us? Well, that's mighty nice of you. Yeah, 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 sure is. And uh, we'd be proud to accept, wouldn't we, Hawk? <laughs> All right, then. We'll be there. Good. I hope you won't be disappointed. We'll be along in an hour or so, Judy. Judy's as good a cook as her mother was, and that's going some. Yeah, we'd best move away so she can clear the table now, though. Hey, you fellas go on. I'll give Judy a hand. Oh, huh? thank you, California. Mm, I didn't realize it was so late. Seems to be dark outside already. Days are getting shorter and shorter. I guess before we settle down, I'd better go check on the things at the stockyard, Hoppy. Don't you have a night watchman down there? Oh, yes, but we like to make sure he's on the job and everything's all right. Ordinarily, Wayne looks in on them about this time of night, but I told him I'd do it tonight. Well, maybe a little fresh air do California and me some good. Mind if we tag along? I was just going to suggest it. We can talk some more on the way. Good. Sounds like you get a lot of cattle in these pens. Only about 250 head right now, California. Yes, it's all right, Jack. I thought I recognized your voice. Just checking up, Jack. Everything all right? Quiet as anything. Good. We'll just walk on down through the yard. Okay, Mr. Barton. Watch out for the mud down by the watering trough. We will. The lantern gives us enough light to see where we're going. How often do you ship out of here, Barton? Twice a week now. Train due in tomorrow to load these. Twice a week? Say, you're getting good railroad service. Mesa Junction's growing by leaps and bounds. Someday we'll be as big as Santa Fe or Tucson if it keeps up. I hope you're right. It'd be a great thing for the ranchers in this part of the... Ow! Horton! Hoppy! He's been shot. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Cowtown Troubleshooters. Hoppy and California were in Mesa Junction to check on the possibilities of driving the Bar 20 cattle to that town for sale to one of the two cattle buying companies. They discovered a feud between the two companies existed, and that night, while with Fred Barton at the Barton Carter stockyard, someone hiding in the dark near one of the cattle pens fired a shot which hit the older partner. Hey, the couch in the back office. We can put him on that. Sure. I'm afraid he's hit pretty bad. What happened to the other fellow that was. He went after the coyote that shot your boss here. Here we are now. Easy, easy. There. Uh, he's plumb unconscious. Where can we find a doctor? Doc Miller lives about a half mile or so from here. I'll saddle up and get him. How is he, California? He's in bad shape, I'm afraid. Hey, did you see any signs of the fellow that shot him? No, whoever did it got away before I could get close. I'm going after Doc Miller. Keep an eye on things like it back, will you, you please? You better get word to Barton's daughter and his partner after you send the doctor over. Yeah, I'll tell him to come right over. <laughs> I wonder how he's making out by now, Hoppy. I don't know. That wound was mighty close to the heart. Yeah. Where is he? In the other office? Yeah. Oh, this is awful, Cassidy. Does Judy know what's happened? She's in there with her dad and the doctor now. How, how is Fred? We don't know yet. You better sit down. Maybe a long wait. I was afraid something like this would happen. Granger will stop at nothing even if he has to hire someone to kill. I thought uh, Pete Foley was after you and said to Barton. He probably mistook Barton for me. Ordinarily, I'm the one that checks on things here in the evening. Fred just took my place tonight. That's right, isn't it? Someone hiding and waiting to take a shot at you couldn't tell the difference in the dim light of a lantern. No, and if Fred dies, even though we know who's responsible, how can we prove it? That may be tough to do. 
Get down by that pen where your partner is shot and see if we can find anything interesting. All right, but I doubt if we'll find anything that'll help. Never can tell. Might be worth a try, huh, Hoppy? That's right. There's always a chance. Come on. Hold the lantern over here a little closer, California. Sure. You think the shot came from about here? Uh, it looked that way to me. I saw the muzzle flash, and as near as I could tell, the gunman must have been standing with the corner of that pen there, with the water trough. Well, that sounds logical. It'd be a good hiding place, all right. Look here. Wait a minute. In the mud here. By golly, a good, clear footprint. Let me see. California, there's a shovel by the feed trough over there. Get it, will you? Uh, sure, sure. Here, uh, you take the lantern. What are you going to do, Hoppy? Take out this slab of mud and save the footprint. The ground's mostly clay, and we can bake it and have a good mold. Of course. And then find the boots that fit the mold. Here's the shovel, Hoppy. Wait, listen. What's the matter, Carter? I heard a noise over by that other pen. Someone's been watching us. Huh? Uh, what kind of a noise? Sounded like a board cracking. Whoever it was must have climbed over the fence and disappeared. No use going after him. I tried that without any luck after Barton was shot. Let's get out of here. Standing by this lantern makes us perfect targets. All right. As soon as I get this footprint, we'll go back to the office. The doctor's still working on him, but he thinks there's a chance he'll live. There, there, my dear, of course he'll live. Oh, Wayne, how could anyone be so low as to shoot Dad? Please, Judy, don't think about it. Oh, you were right. We should have sold the company to Granger and gone back to the East. Excuse me, Miss Judy. Don't judge the West by one town or the people by one or two men. I'm sorry, Hoppy. I, I didn't mean it that way, but... Uh, we understand, ma'am, but we're going to do everything we can to see that whoever shot your dad is rounded up. I appreciate your help, but what can you do? We've got a footprint that we're sure was left with the man who shot him. We'll turn it over to the sheriff and then try to find the boots that fit it. Hey, I uh, wonder if the sheriff's got back to town by now. I doubt it. He spends more time out at Johnson's ranch than at his office. Well, we're trying to locate him. In the meantime, we'll keep the footprint. It's our only clue. Sheriff, as far as it goes. Yeah, you sure missed a lot of excitement. Yeah, yeah, I guess it did. I'm sorry you fellas had so much trouble finding me tonight, too, but there was a fracas over at the saloon. So we heard. Now, that footprint you got, uh, what'd you do? With oh, it? it's in our room at the hotel. When we didn't find you here in the office uh, when we first came by, we figured we'd better take care of it ourselves. Good. Well, gents, I reckon I'd better go out to the Barton Carter place and see how Fred Barton's making out. You say his partner and his daughter are there with him? That's right, Sheriff. The doctor was still working on him when we left. Well, if he regains consciousness, I ought to be on hand to ask him some questions. I'm afraid it may be quite a while before he can do much talking, Sheriff. There may be. But I'll go on out and look around anyway. You fellas might as well go on back and get some sleep. I'll send for you if I want you. <laughs> That old bed's going to feel mighty good to me, Hoppy. Uh, this has turned into a pretty long day. <laughs> I could use a little shut-eye myself, but I wish we could figure... Wait a minute. What's the matter, Hoppy? Look, that light. I'm going to go toward our room. Hey, did we go off and leave the lamp burn? No. Looks like we got company. A footprint. Somebody must have been trying to find out where we hid it. Yeah, God, I must have been right. There was somebody watching while we was getting it. What are we going to do? Get on the other side of the doorway. The light just went off. Whoever's in there is coming out. Stand where you are. Huh? Don't reach for that. Well, if it ain't Pete Foley. I ain't done nothing. Let me go. Yeah, uh, Hoppy. He's got a footprint. Yeah, that's right. And I aim to keep it. No, I can't look out. Look, so you don't, Foley. Grab it. I got it, Hoppy. <clears throat> All right, Foley, on your feet. She almost stomped in the footprint. Come on, inside here. I'll light the lamp here, huh? Listen, if you let me go. Hold it, Foley, you're not going anywhere. There. 
Well, so you're the varmint that tried to kill Fred Barton, huh? Oh, I never shot Barton, I swear. You seem mighty interested in getting that footprint. Well, I had to. I, I was ordered to get it. Ordered to get it? Who ordered you to do it? Granger, my boss. Granger? Uh, do you believe him, Hoppy? I don't know yet. We better turn him over to the sheriff. That's just what we're going to do. Uh-oh, uh, I forgot. The sheriff's out at the Barton Carter Kettle Yard. That's where we're taking Foley, and on the way, we'll stop and get Jess Granger, too. Now, see here, Sheriff, you've no right to hold me here. I've done nothing. Simmer down, Granger. According to Pete here, you sent him a note ordering him to get that footprint. That's a lie. It ain't either a lie. Your name was signed to it, Granger. Where's the note now? Uh, I, I burned it. That was part of the instructions on it. Hmm. How'd this note reach you, Foley? I was home asleep. I woke up and I heard somebody pound on the door. When I got up and went to see who it was, all I found was a note slipped under the door. He's lying, trying to throw the blame on me. He can't prove a word of what well, he said. Both of you have made trouble for Barton and Carter, so it could have been either one of you, I reckon. If you ask me, they're both equally guilty, Sheriff. I wasn't asking you, Carter. We'll get to the right man, don't you worry. Uh, Foley... This note you keep talking about, what kind of paper was it written on? Uh, just ordinary tablet paper, like you see everywhere. Did you recognize the handwriting? Well, I ain't seen much of Granger's writing, but near as I could tell, it looked like his. But he signed his name. I tell you, he's lying. I didn't send him any such note. You know, Sheriff, there's a chance Granger and Foley might both be telling the truth. Huh? Suppose neither one of them shot Barton. And whoever did it was trying to lay the blame on him. But, Hoppy, who else would want to murder Dad? Or me. Remember, whoever fired that shot thought they were shooting at me. I wonder. By the way, were you here all the time after California and I left to find the sheriff? Why, yes. Except for a half hour or so, Wayne went home to get some coffee. Why, Hoppy? I noticed he changed his boots. Were the other ones uncomfortable, Carter? Why... Hoppy, are you trying to say you think Wayne had something to do with this? That's ridiculous. I'm just trying to think of all the angles, Miss Judy. If your dad were out of the way and you married Carter, he'd wind up in control of the whole company. Then he could sell out and go back east. See here, Cassidy, this has gone about far enough. I'm afraid you're getting in pretty deep here, Cassidy. What have you got to go on? Just a shot in the dark, Sheriff. But if Carter went home for coffee, he could have left a note at Foley's house. And the reason I think he might have done just that is because something's missing from the top of his desk. What? What's missing? An ordinary tablet. It was there when we left, and now it's gone. That's a lie. California, take a look through those desk drawers. Sure, Hoppy. You've no right to snoop around my desk. Well, here's your tablet. That don't prove anything, Cassidy. Not yet, it doesn't. But the habit most businessmen have of writing something and then tearing the sheet loose from the tablet might prove plenty. Give me that pencil, too, California. Yeah, yeah, here you are. What are you going to do? By laying the pencil down so the lid is flat against the tablet and then shading it back and forth, we'll see what happens. Hmm. <laughs> Look, whatever was written on the sheet before this one is showing up. Wayne, it says... I know what it says. Get your hands up, all of you. Wayne! He's got a gun! Drop it, Carter! Hop in! Oh! Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Yeah, that was a mighty fast draw, Cassidy. Sure was. Shot the gun clean out of Carter's hand. <laughs> you know, I I feel sorry for Judy, though. She's pretty stunned by the whole thing. Yeah, uh, but it's lucky she found out what kind of a fella Carter was before she married him. Yeah. I, I thought you men would like to know. Dad is conscious now. I think he's going to be all right. Oh, uh, that's good news, Miss Judy. Hoppy... I want to... I want to thank you for what you've done. Judy, you don't owe us any thanks at all. It's hard to believe Wayne would do what he did. I... And now, Miss Judy, you've got to start right now, forgetting all about him. Uh, you're going to be busy running things here until your dad's up and around again. You know that. I know. And I'm frightened at the thought. Uh, Miss Judy, you won't have anything to worry about from my company. In fact, if your dad's agreeable... We might be able to work out a fair plan for consolidation. Oh, that would be wonderful, Mr. Granger. Well, consolidated or not, you can be sure one good customer, Miss Judy. You mean the bar 20? Right. 
And you'd better get things organized, because we'll be back next month with 400 head of the best beef cattle in the West. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's no bull. California. <laughs> <laughs> When Hoppy plays detective, he finds the guilty man and saves the town from having a deadly feud after he and California act as Cowtown Troubleshooters. Another thrilling adventure is in store for you next time with Hoppy and California and a surprise for all. Be sure to listen. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr., Cowtown Troubleshooters was written by Robert T. Smith with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based on the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>